We're at the western edge, the west riding of Yorkshire. The history here stretches back many thousands of years. We're in a glacial valley carved out at the end of the last ice age. And all around us, the hills are dotted with the remains of ancient Neolithic and Iron Age settlements. During the days of the Roman Empire, a road ran nearby, linking the fort at Olicana, it's modern day Ilkley, about five miles that way, with the city of Mancunian, modern day Manchester. But it was in the 7th century, an Anglo-Saxon leader named Rethel settled here and gave the area its name, Rethel's Den. It's now known as Riddlesden. Since that time, the families who lived in this place who became the centre of local wealth, power and influence for the next thousand years. And this is where they lived. This was their home. East Riddlesden Hall. The de Montalts had distinguished themselves in battle. Eustace de Montalt had fought under King William at the Battle of Hastings, and his descendant Andamar was one of the knights who captured William the Lion, King of Scotland, at the Battle of Annick in 1174. But all that action didn't leave them much time for construction. Only a single storey hall was built during this period. And this section of wall, under this much later building, is all that remains of the original hall. If anything, the Paslus were even more eminent than their predecessors, and included royal administrators, judges and abbots. One of them had been Baron of the Exchequer to Henry III. They built a second hall here in 1466, although at the time it was a farmhouse. And within a century they'd extend this to make the kitchen and the drawing room. The Paslus also improved and extended this magnificent barn. Originally built in the 12th century, it's 120 feet long by 40 feet wide. With stalls down either side for livestock and two threshing floors in between each of these arched porchways. But for all the exuberant building, there is a darker side to this story. All in all, there have been sightings of up to a dozen different apparitions in the hall and grounds. Phantom men and women, children, dogs, and some visitors have complained of nearly tripping over a cat. No cats live in the hall. The story of the Grey Lady, one of the Demontel women, is even more tragic and chilling. The master of the house returned one day to find his lady in flagrante with another man, possibly a travelling merchant, a scandal of the time. The master, a true product of the age in which he lived, reacted negatively. The lady was locked in her bedchamber and she starved to death. The lady's lover paid an even more terrible price. He was bricked up in a wall and left to die. Of course, that meant they were devout Catholics. So, when Henry VIII broke with the Church of Rome and began the Reformation during the 1530s, the Paslus found themselves in opposition to the King himself. Walter Paslu was imprisoned in the Tower of London, and John Paslu, the Abbot of Warley in Lancashire, was hanged from his own abbey walls. James Murgatroyd is the really towering figure in the history of this hall, and much of the modern restoration reflects his time and the work he carried out here. And yet his reasons for moving here were stark and simple and driven by survival. In 1638 the plague was raging through Halifax and the Murgatroyds needed to escape. When the Murgatroyds moved to East Riddlesden Hall, James was already a successful cloth merchant with an annual income of around £2,000, which is the 17th century equivalent of about £2 million. So he could afford to get his family out of harm's way. However, in the 17th century, there were some dangers even greater than the plague. Instead, James threw himself into a new round of building and renovation work here at East Riddlesden Hall. The medieval farmhouse across to the earlier de Montalt Hall was remodelled in order to unify the architecture. And James also added these rose windows, which were a popular architectural feature in his hometown of Halifax at the time. Now, the way the hall is approached today was originally the back of the building. This was the front. The road followed the line of the River Air, leading to this front door. 
so when you rounded the last bend in the river, this magnificent facade would swing into view. But it wasn't all plain sailing. By 1651, the civil wars were over and Charles I was dead. England was a republic. Known former royalists were subject to a punitive 10% tax. The state records show the Murgatroyds were forced to pale. James himself died in 1653. And his tomb's here at the churchyard of St. Mary's in Ludenden near Halifax. Edmund Starkey came into ownership here because of debt owed to him by John Murgatroyd, one of three Murgatroyd men who had claims on the estate. But the Civil War held up legal proceedings, and in the meantime, all three Murgatroyds had died. So when probate was finally issued in 1672, Edmund Starkey took three dead men to court. Elizabeth Starkey died in 1740, and 40 years after her death, the Starkeys began selling off parts of the estate. By 1800, they'd moved out altogether. For me, the wonderful thing about East Riddlesden Hall is the way it's grown and evolved over the centuries. A dozen families built it, and 50 generations lived here, each one adding to our shared history, our shared heritage.